This overview briefly presents some basics of program evaluation, its main purpose, the two major kinds of program evaluation, two major kinds of evaluators, how program evaluation relates to problem solving, and the skill sets that program evaluation draws on most heavily. I'm Edwina Pendarvis, an educational researcher for Word Farmers and Professor Emeritus at Marshall University. The overarching purpose of program evaluation is to determine the worth or merit of a program, such as a professional development program, a curriculum, or a service to a client group. Though programs, curricula, and services differ in many important ways, there are certain measures of worth that are interest to most stakeholders. The worth or merit of a program of any kind might be conceptualized in terms of such measures as its quality, its utility, its effectiveness, its impact, its equity, or its significance. Program evaluators identify the kinds and sources of information most pertinent to those measures of, of success and then design or select methods of collecting and analyzing that information or data. After completing the data collection and analysis, program evaluators present their findings. Perhaps of most importance, the evaluation findings lead to recommendations about the continuation, modification, or even the discontinuation of the program. The quality, utility, effectiveness, impact, equity, or significance of a program is assessed through two kinds of evaluation that are often contrasted, formative versus summative evaluation. Each of these two forms is important and often the two overlap. Formative evaluation helps program staff improve the program as it proceeds. It takes place during the course of the program and helps ensure that the program is carried out in an efficient, professional, and timely manner in keeping with program goals. Depending on the kind of program, formative evaluation questions might ask, are the training sessions on schedule so that participants will be eligible to apply for certification? Are parents participating in the after-school enrichment program in expected numbers? Do participants consider the workshop facilities conducive to collaborative learning? Data collection and analysis are frequent and program staff play a role in interpreting formative data. These two characteristics, along with the fact that formative findings are not subject to the in-depth analysis needed for summative evaluation, reflect the need for formative feedback to be immediate so that staff can take action to make any needed changes so that they can accomplish the program goals. In some forms of evaluation, especially meta-evaluation, Results of formative evaluation activities are aggregated to support summative generalizations about the program. Summative evaluation helps the funder and sometimes program staff make decisions about continuing, modifying, or discontinuing the program. Summative evaluation considers whether program goals were accomplished. Summative evaluation questions might ask, in what way and to what extent do participants use what they learned through the professional development sessions? To what extent did collaborative planning increase among teachers who participated in the co-teaching professional development program? Or did the activities provided in the first year of the program improve participants' use of inclusive leadership practices? Typically, summative evaluation combines analyses from several methods of data collection. It offers an in-depth perspective on the program's success. Data collection and analysis are less frequent 
in summative evaluation than in formative evaluation. And in summative evaluation, the evaluators take the sole responsibility for interpreting the data. In long-term programs, summative evaluation sometimes has a formative function. For example, a program that is funded for three years may have a summative evaluation at the end of the program's first and second years, as well as the final year of the program. Even though each year of a program may represent different phases, the pro overall goals are the same, and the interim summative evaluations can ensure that the program is moving toward those goals. Program evaluation may be conducted by internal or external third-party evaluators. In internal evaluation, evaluation activities are conducted by program staff. These are usually formative evaluation activities and are probably the most prevalent type of evaluation because many human services programs do not have funding to support external evaluation. In external evaluation, External activities are conducted by a third-party evaluator with expertise in research and evaluation, and sometimes in the service or training that the program provides. External evaluators are considered important in terms of the different perspective they bring to the evaluation process. Evaluation helps with problem solving. Because external evaluators are not program staff, they have no vested interest in the program's success. Their assessment is valued in part for its objectivity, or at least its freedom from the potential bias of those who have a professional or personal stake in the outcome of the evaluation. Of foremost importance, however, is their understanding of evaluation theories, models, and methods and the application of those to different kinds of programs. Because of their informed and disinterested perspective, external evaluators and evaluation products play an important role in helping surface problems and solutions to problems. They see different dimensions of the program than do program staff. However, this important difference in perspective means that program staff are the ones who need to solve problems with the program. External evaluators can't do that. It is not their function, nor necessarily within their sphere of expertise, and could bias their further evaluative efforts. Program evaluation draws on several different skill sets. First, skills for working with clients. Those skills include forming positive interpersonal relationships, such as establishing and maintaining rapport, using active listening, and balancing empathy and objectivity in gathering, analyzing, interpreting, and reporting evaluative data. Then there are skills for collecting data, which include survey construction in keeping with professional standards, interviewing skills, including developing prompts and follow-up questions, and gathering data from existing sources, such as tests, surveys, interim reports, or workshop materials. There are also skills for preparing data for analysis. These include entering data onto spreadsheets and into statistical software packages, and cleaning data for analysis by reading evaluative data sets of inaccurate or incomplete records, and developing code books that describe the evaluative data files and define variables and their values. Another set of skills are those skills for analyzing data, which include statistical analysis, such as using simple descriptive statistics and more complex inferential analysis. Content analysis, examining records to discover relevant patterns, and qualitative da data analysis to discover trends or themes in verbal or iconic responses, such as narratives or drawings. 
There are also skills for reporting findings, which include describing the findings of program evaluation through accurate, succinct, and well-organized narratives and graphics, and connecting findings to current related research literature, and making recommendations based on findings to program staff and other stakeholders.